Today we're going to do something I think is going to be really cool. It's been a long time, I think, since I made a video that I was actually really excited about making. I made a couple ramble videos lately, but uh, this one I think you're going to like. If it works, we'll see. So anyways, the reason that this video came to be is I've talked a little bit about getting into automation, making things easier on myself, and uh, this is a big one for that. So when it comes to buying soil, the best deals are if you buy it in a compressed block. And uh, most people know about like the Pro Mix. Um, can't think of the exact name for it, but I'll put it. I'll put a link in the description where you can check that out. Uh, but today I found in Walmart, just happened to be in there grocery shopping. I found these Pro Mix blocks, which are uh, quite heavy. There's actually a lot in here. Once I you know get it all fluffed up. But these were five bucks. Uh, this is not an organic Pro Mix. I, I don't think most of it is, but it's got just your regular stuff in it. It's got uh, peat moss, cocoa core, perlite, limestone, a wetting agent. Don't know what that might be, and uh, mycorrhizae, which I can't ever say that correctly. So I want to check this out. I bought three of them just because they were so cheap at five dollars each. And that brings us to the next part, which is the fun part. I want to make an automated soil sifter. This will be the super soil sifter, is the idea. So I have my This is my sifting screen that I usually would use. And I would just place this on a bin and by hand just rub the soil through. And this is probably a smaller mesh than I need. This is probably a quarter inch mesh. You could go a little bit bigger than that and it'd be just fine. But you get a really nice fluffy, fluffy soil when you're done, which I've said a million times, I really love fluffy soils for microgreens. However, it's a lot of work. Um, I've made a video where I, I played some drum beat or something I made while I sifted it just to show you how much work it really is. It's a pain. I don't enjoy it. So what I'm going to try to do, it's going to be a little bit different, is originally I was going to build a whole frame to uh, house the sifter box in, and I realized my bench will probably work great. This is just a prototype. If it works, I'll build something all out of steel, I'll build something better. Um, but this is really just find out, does it even work at all? And uh, what kind of problems do I encounter when I try to make it work? So I have uh, some random rusty springs that I found. I have so much junk, you wouldn't believe it, that was left over from my grandfather, from my uncle. My father's got stuff. I've got enough junk to build just about anything. But anyways, I got these old springs. They're going to be hung off the corners of this screen in that frame. And so a whole thing will be suspended in springs. This is the plan. Then I've got this contraption that I built out of a bunch of junk. So this is a, a reduce right angle drive uh, drill attachment, gearbox, whatever you want to call it. And so this will be mounted right onto the, the box. Think something like this. I'm, I'm probably going to put an extension out the side so I can actually get to it all right. But just imagine it being like solidly mounted right here. And then this being, this piece here being solidly mounted. And so when you turn the drill, it'll create this like three quarter inch circular motion, three quarter inch uh, radius. So it's gonna be like an inch and a half of movement. It's probably gonna be too much. But so you can see how it's supposed to work. And uh, hopefully without losing any fingers or anything, uh, this piece just really floats pretty loose. That's not ideal. Eventually, if this works, that would be like in a barren. And uh, all being attached to wood, it's probably going to shake itself apart. But we'll see what happens. Maybe we can get some soil through it before it falls apart. So the idea is that this will be mounted right probably just above these these brackets here uh, and just kind of floating in here of something that comes out 
where I can attach my, my uh, wild contraption and I'll use a cordless drill that will run the shaker and just shake the heck out of it and see what happens. I, like I said, I originally didn't even think about using my bench, but I actually love the idea because if it works, I could actually create a bin that goes underneath that you just slide out and you know your fresh sifted soil is there and you could plant right on the bench and I could also make the top hinge or something so you could drop bales right on in there. Um, it'd be a complete new design than what I have here because it'd be probably more metal and stuff but let's see what happens. Let's just see if this even works. Well let's see what I ended up with. I have not done a trial run on this yet. I don't think it's going to work what I've done so far. So you can see I've got the thing hanging up by springs. It shakes pretty easily. Then I got this extension that comes out here where it is attached here. And as you spin this, it's kind of hard to spin it by hand. But like I, I started with unsprung, like I should have sprung it like part way. So it's, it's like here, it just floats. And over here is all sprung. So I, I should have done that a little bit differently. But like I said also, this isn't even, that just kind of floats. So let me uh, hook the drill up to that real quick and we will see what it's going to do together. Like I said, I, I don't have a lot, of, a lot of hope for what I've done so far, but I think this is doable. Let me just get the drill on there. All right, so I've got my Ryobi drill on here. Should shake like crazy. Hopefully it doesn't shake the drill right out of my hands. And let's just see. Let's see if we can go slow. Okay, so it does, it does move kind of the way I want it to. Here's some crunching going on here. Not sure what's crunching, but let's try some speed and see what happens. All right, now that... <laughs> You can see it, it slid down. I've got to put another screw in that bracket. Let me just see if I can bend that back up right. I'm going to put another screw in that bracket and we will try again. Um, I think it, I don't know. This isn't a very good design, but it might work. Let's just give it another shot. Hold on. All right, so let's try this again. This time, I'm going to use two hands because I don't really like the idea of running that drill with one hand. Let's just see what it looks like. It's pretty aggressive. That's got potential. It could do something. Let's uh throw some soil in there and see what it does. If something like this works, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up putting like a rubber membrane around so that the soil stays all in there. And uh, like I said, I could have like a, a hatch where I just drop it in. Let's get some soil in there. I'll get a bin underneath just to see if we get anything and see what happens. Got a bin here, it's already got some soil in it, just so you know. It won't catch everything. It's not big enough. Just want to see if I can get some of this in there without breaking it up too much, without losing too much of it. That looks like a pretty good little test chunk. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera. Hopefully it doesn't just fly right out, which I suspect it might. Now before you watch this next little clip and see if this thing actually works, there's something I really meant to talk about that I completely forgot because I got kind of excited playing around, seeing how things were going to go. Um, but I think it's important that I touch on this and kind of explain it. So anytime you're doing pretty much anything, unless it's really, really dangerous or, um, is going to be like customer facing it's important to just try it like 
Don't over engineer things. Don't put too much effort into something just to find out if something's going to even work. Or in the same manner, don't put too much effort into something that you're developing before a customer has seen it and you even know whether or not they like it. So I take this same exact approach in software development or in many things in my life. Um, in software development, for example, what I try to do is I will try to get all my pieces working as a prototype, like end to end. So if I have like a front end and I have a back end API and maybe I'm using some sort of login software, I want to make sure that like my UI does the simplest thing. Um, somebody can log into it and that it communicates to the back end with that authentication and can retrieve some information. That's it. Then from there, I'll go through and refactor and uh, try to clean it up and make it a little bit better. Uh, know that, I know this doesn't matter to most of you because you're probably not a software developer, but the same holds true for anything. I think a lot of people don't do things because they feel like it's going to be too complicated, too much work, and they just, I don't know, I, I don't, it, maybe it's fear, um, and really just, I think you should just jump in and do it. Like, that's how I approached my microgreens business from day one. Um, I started the business within like two weeks of the time I decided to do it. And I just want to see more people do things. Like, don't talk about doing them, do them. I I'm guilty of it too. Like, I, I talk a lot about things I want to do, things I'm going to do, that maybe I never do, or maybe it takes me way too long to get to them. But I just really want to emphasize that point that it's important to do it. This contraption I built that you're about to see whether or not it works, whether or not it fails, I have about an hour's time invested in it. I do have a little bit more time than that in thinking, but the amount of time it took me to actually assemble it, including digging around my garage and various areas for pieces and parts, it's probably an hour. That's even with making the video. So I hope you enjoy this next clip. I hope you uh, take away from this that, you know, even the crudest thing might work and it might be a uh, good thing to try to just do something. All right, check out this next clip and enjoy. It works. Holy crap, it works. Looks like it's sliding towards this way, so let me just get the bin under there, because, wow. Try not to lose too much of it. I would say for a prototype, that's a huge success. You just kind of help it out a little bit by just kind of break up some of these a little. Like this is definitely not the final revision of this thing. Just take the camera over and show you what happened. All right, honestly, I couldn't be much more excited than what I am right now with how this is working. You know, for the pile of junk that I threw together, you can see I've got some big chunks here I still gotta haven't broke up. But look at all the stuff that is big that it left behind. And then more importantly, look at what's coming out of it. This is awesome. I can definitely improve on this. I can make something really nice here. I know I can. Um, I don't think that my orbit, or it's not really an orbit, it's more of a, a circle, 
doesn't need to be as big as it is. Like these could be closer together so it's not spinning so dramatically. Um, that should be a barren. This is actually hot to the touch. There's a lot of things I could do much, much better than what I just threw together right here. But wow, I'm really happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was pretty, pretty short for what I showed. Um, if you want to see round two of this, if you want to see where I'm going to go with it, let me know. Definitely leave a comment and I will respond. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.